Well, later tonight in November, snowfall is forecasted to hit the Twin Cities, but right now, calm outside, and of course, a calm day inside U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis. It can certainly get loud inside this building, and just a few moments ago when the Vikings were introduced, it was downright shaking in here. They're set for football as the Vikings get ready to do battle with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Josh Lambeau to kick off for Jacksonville. Taken about seven yards deep. And he opts to not bring this one out. The first drive will start at the 25. We know not every run's going to be a big hitter, but you know they'll take that type of result on each and every attempt. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. Cousins gives way to Cook. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 11 yards there, first down. And it's pretty evident when you watch how Minnesota plays, just how important Dalvin Cook is to their offense. A 1,000-yard rusher a year before, the first one the Vikings had since Adrian Peterson was dominating their carries. And having Cook in the lineup for the bulk of the season, that made Minnesota exactly what their head coach Mike Zimmer wanted them to be, a much more physical team that complemented their defense. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. A big hitter there. A first down gain of 26 yards. So back-to-back -back big runs picking apart this defense on the opening drive. I thought this was a passing game. I thought this was the era we were in where the ball was always in the air, right? They didn't get the memo. They didn't get the memo, and I know this to be true. Offensive linemen still, to this day, they want to run the football. They want to fire out and hit people across the line of scrimmage, and they're clearing space. So in Jacksonville territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 32-yard line. And off comes to Cook. Josh Jones in on the stop. Nice job there on the tackle, keep him to the short gain. And, of course, he got some good news this week. He was named AFC Defensive Player of the Week from last week's effort. And part of the reason he got that award, because of plays like that. Not every play is spectacular. Not every play is for a loss. Make the plays that are in front of you, keep it to short gains, and you pile up statistics. To throw on second and six, Cousins. This one brought in by Jefferson. And he'll go out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. Give him 14 on that one and a first down. First and 10 at the 14-yard line. Now how about this throw right here? Had to throw it to the left sideline, and you know the timing's got to be correct on this one. Ball's got to be right where it needs to be, and it was. That's because he had great arm strength on that one, able to drive the football. Quarterback's a little bit making sure off their arms. And he can't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. Another nice gain. 13 yards that time and another first down. First down. First and goal at the one-yard line. First and goal at the one. They get this out left. And Thielen's got it. Touchdown, Vikings. His ninth touchdown of the season. And the Vikings take the ball down the field and score on their opening drive. He's got it, and the Vikings take a 7-0 lead. Makes the score, Vikings 7, Jaguars nothing. How does the kickoff 
unit as they run up and send this one away. Fields it in the middle of the end zone. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. At their own 24 yard line. up second down. It's a gain of Brandon, to me, what's important right here on this drive is for them to get at least two first downs. They've got to give their defense a chance to settle down, catch their breath a little bit after they give up a touchdown on the opening drive. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. <laughs> On the run, here's Anthony McFarland. He finds an opening past the 40. And he'll get this down to the 39-yard line. The ball carrier. He's able to rip off 32 on that one. It's a first down. Even from up here in the booth, the play-by-play -play guy could tell that there was some pretty good blocking on the right side of the line. Well, you have good eyes, and it's almost like a ballet when it's executed that well. Everyone in the right spot, everyone in sync, everyone hitting the perfect notes. A little more percussion and a lot more yeah. bass, I would think, than you get your normal ballet. But at the same time, that was well executed. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. Now a first carry for their fullback. And a short gain there down to the 37-yard line. He's Give the tackle there to Daniil Hunter. A gain of now that's the defense that they were looking for, being able to get extra bodies to the point of attack to deal with the big guy carrying the ball. You really don't want to be in a position where it's a one-on-one -on -one tackle with him. Love now on second down. Pressure coming from the Vikings, and they get there and bring it down. Yannick Ngakwe. It'll go as a loss of about eight as he gets in there to drop him. Third and long. Third and long for Love. And he'll let this one go deep for Chark. And that ball is caught by DJ Chark for the Jags touchdown. DJ Chark is 11th touchdown of the year. And the Jaguars are within an extra point of tying this one up. It's up and good. So these teams match touchdowns here in the first quarter, and we're tied 7-7. Josh Lambeau to kick off for Jacksonville. Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. Takes this about five yards deep. And Abdullah will not try to bring it out. At their own 25-yard line. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. And you know, it's certainly a lot of football left to play. We're not into December yet, but right now where we stand, they're in first place in their division, looking really good and looking to be a threat come January. And the pressure too much that time as Cousins goes down. Josh Allen in there to get him, and that is sack number six now for him on the year. So after the sack, here's second and 14. A give. This is Cook. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. I was pretty surprised there when they lined up to run it on second and long, but it worked out for them. It certainly did, and that requires some confidence, some fortitude, and a little bit of hope, doesn't it? 
you hope you catch the defense just right and break off a big run to help yourself out on the next down. Cousins from the gun on third. Looking for Jefferson, but this is intercepted. Picked off at the 48. And off to the races down the right side. And he'll take this into the end zone. Now hold on here. We do have a flag down. So let's see what this is about. So the special teams penalty cost some yardage there as they come out on first and 10. McFarland running out of the gun. They find some open field here. And he will get this into the end zone for a Jaguar touchdown. The ball carrier. Anthony McFarland, his 11th touchdown of the year. And the Jaguars have taken the lead. People always talk about one of his biggest strengths running the football vision, and he found the spot there, went into the end zone. You're exactly right about that. It wasn't just the vision, right? Once he saw the gap, decisiveness, made up his mind, and about the power to finish the play. Not only did he get good blocking, he created his own space as well. And the decision to come out of the end zone is going to cost him five yards as he's taken down right at the 20. Take over first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. The Minnesota offense about ready to get this next drive underway. A tale of two extremes already in this game. A touchdown pass on their opening drive followed by an interception last time out. Now, it sounds like things balance out, right? What's that, that mythological thing that we do? If you have a candy bar, have a diet soda with it, it balances it out. And we know that's not really true, right? Because the interception, that sting lingers a little bit longer. Got to come out now and put together some nice plays. Operating from the 27 now. Here's second and three. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. Flush to his right. He's going to take off with it. Eight yards that time, able to take off, and the result is a first down. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. From the gun, here's Cousins. And that's caught inside the 35. Touchdown, Vikings. Justin Jefferson, his 19th touchdown now in the season. And the Vikings are an extra point away from tying this thing up. And we've got a good one brewing. We're all knotted up at 14. That ties the game at 14. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. Fields it in the middle of the end zone. And he'll be brought down shy of the 20, so the decision to bring it out of the end zone, not a good one. At their own 18-yard line. come to the line to start their next drive. And right now they're saying, hey, let's keep this going. Two drives, two touchdowns. Yeah, can't ask for a better start than that, can you? I mean, this is the way you practice it. This is the way you rehearse it. But right now, the play calling, they're locked in really well. And incomplete as he was knocked as he threw it. And it took the ball off course. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. From the gun, this will be McFarland. And he finds some space past the 25 to the 27. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. 
That was another good run, and he's having an excellent day. And right now, I don't think his team could have any more confidence in handing him the football. On third and one, love to throw. And incomplete as the screen there unsuccessful. So now fourth down coming up. How about some applause for the defense there? They forced him to throw that one into coverage, and just like that, they're staring at a fourth down. Well done. He punted five times in the win last week as this one's away. 39-yard punt, six yards on the return. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10 at their own 36-yard line. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. And they had to go a long way on their last drive to score the touchdown. This time, they get at least a little bit more of a cushion in the field position. I have to think that with this field position, after what they did on the last drive, they might want to take a shot right now and try to cut down the length of the drive. What I loved about meeting with these coaches before the game is we didn't even have to ask any questions. They told us that they were going to be aggressive and push the ball downfield. They weren't successful on that play, but look for them to try it again later. Try again from the 36 on second and 10. Working out of the gun, Cousins. He'll dump this off to Cook. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. 11 yards there, first down. We often talk about understanding the playbook, understanding progressions, and understanding what the defense is doing. We saw all that on that play. Great recognition and understood where his running back was going to be. Found a way to have him leak out underneath, hit him with the football, and they picked up the first down. And he's going to take this across midfield into Jacksonville territory. Midfield to the 48-yard line. Four yards on the pickup. Second and six. Pretty entertaining start. 14 all the score on EA Sports. 14 14. On second down, it's Cook. And they'll get this just to the 47. One yard gain. Josh Allen on the tackle. A gain of a yard brings up third and five. Cousins. Pressure here and down he goes. Sack back at about the 43 yard line. Finding his way home for the sack that time, Taven Bryan. So on fourth down, Britton Colquitt on to punt. He was only asked to punt once in the victory last week as he sends this one away. This is taken at about the 14. Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. And the points, they have come fast and furious in this quarter. You really don't want to be on the defensive side of the ball right now, do you? Because you're either thinking, maybe they do a double team and it's intercepted. Picked up by Mike Hughes. And they have possession, and they have it at the 38-yard line. He's had a fantastic rookie season, made a lot of lovely throws, but that wasn't one of them. Well, we got to give him one, don't we? I mean, with the year he's having, a lot easier for he and his teammates to accept that throw because for the most part, what they've seen, it's been pretty sensational. Tajay Sharp, the intended target, and that'll bring up second down. Early on, the running game's been working well, and the offensive line has been pleased by that. The thought process there, catch those safeties creeping up, trying to help against the running game. They tried to hit them over the top, unsuccessfully. A tenth carry in the game for Cook. This one past the 30, down to the 25. A gain of 13, it's a first down. 
That's a nice run right there, able to get to the outside. And so many times, defenses say, okay, we've got you hemmed in. But if you're running the football, at least you know where everyone is coming from. You don't have to worry about the backside at all. That allows you to run with a little bit more confidence as you traverse down the field. Cousins on first down. And Rudolph has it, the tight end. And they take him down, losing yardage back at the 27. He was unable to shake free there, and they'll cover him for a loss of a yard. At the Jaguars' 27-yard line. That pass play wound up for negative yardage, so here's second and 11. To throw is Cousins. Setting up the screen for Cook. Good job defensively to hold that to four yards, and now it's third down. It's a gain of four. Makes it third and seven. So now it's third and seven, and defensively, it's a dime look. Six DBs. <laughs> Here's Cousins. Back in the end zone. Could he get his feet down? No, it's incomplete. They're going for a receiver there. Already has one touchdown in this first half. A second one not to be. I like where their head space is, though. I mean, I really like the thought process, right? You got a guy who's already scored one, right? You want to go back to him, continue the hot hand, and make them adjust to you defensively. I like what they were trying to get done, even though they were successful. This about five yards deep. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Take over first and 10 at their own 22-yard line. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. And last time, one play interception. So this offense, they should be fresh. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. And I can't wait to see what they decide to do with play calling because a one play drive where you throw an interception, a lot of people would think the very next time out, run the football, don't give them a chance. Maybe play action? I think maybe you go play action, show your quarterback, get a little confidence in him, and let him fling another one. So after the incompletion, second and 10 from the 22. And some room to work. right side and he just falls short down at the one yard line it's a big play for the Jaguars 77 yards after the big play a chance to finish now on first and goal and they'll turn to a power game to try to get in and he'll take this into the end zone touchdown Jacksonville it's the fullback. His fifth touchdown now on the year. And once again, the Jaguars are back out in front. It's up and good to make it 21-17. Makes the score Jaguars 21, Vikings 17. And Lambeau now after the touchdown. He'll kick this one away. Fields it in the middle of the end zone. This to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. The Vikings take over first and 10 at their own 19 yard line. The Minnesota offense about ready to get this next drive underway. And last time able to get three. That's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. 
Just, I, I like the way the game you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. So first and ten now from the 30. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. That's going to go as a loss of six, and it'll set him back for second down. Brought down back at the 24-yard line. Cousins to throw it. Looking for Jefferson, but this is intercepted. It goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. That's a ball he would like to have back, and it lands right in the lap of the defender from there. He doesn't have very far to go before he gets to the end zone, and he got there in a hurry. And his kick is right through. Jaguars 28, Vikings 17. Josh Lambeau to kick off for Jacksonville. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. Taken about seven yards deep. And Abdullah will not try to bring it out. At their own 25-yard line. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. And fresh off the pick six. They've got to forget about that quickly. In this case now, the guy throwing the ball, he's got to be like... Looking for Phelan, but it's intercepted. Picked up by the rookie from Florida, C.J. Henderson. Room here to run. And they will finally put it into the return, but not until he takes it back all the way inside the 10-yard line. He's at it again, Charles. He had the pick six last week. Not a pick six here, but an interception. Hey, it's another Oski, because that's the word we use when we intercept the pass. Oski tells your team to rally around and block for you. Well, that worked really well last week because he had made it all the way to the end zone. This week, he got the Oski, maybe not a touchdown, but boy, he's playing really well. And, and he's going to pull his way down to about the one-yard line. Short of the goal line. It's a good pickup of seven yards, and now they're looking at second and goal. Good yardage on first down. Now can they punch it in on second and goal? And they'll let the fullback try and take him home. And they'll take this one in for the Jags touchdown. It's the fullback with his second TD of the game sixth on the year and the Jaguars add on to their lead and he's been a busy man five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead 31 Vikings 17 and Lambeau now after the touchdown he'll kick this one away takes this about five yards deep and he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee maybe a yard shy of there at the 24 first and 10 at their own 24 yard line the minnesota offense about ready to get this next drive underway they're sort of seeing themselves spiral out of control let's see if they can get things back on track and this is where the coach is walking that line of being calm and really being firm with his team. Add one, tell me once, you know, we were having a tough patch. This too shall pass, this too shall pass. And finally, we kept having a rough patch. He said, but you've got to do something <laughs> to make it pass. And that's what they have to do. They've got to get some control back, get themselves reasserted, and calm things down. See if they can get calm and reassert themselves here. It's a gain of six, moves them to a manageable third and two situation. Third and two. Followed by 
by the return for six points. If you want to be accepted by your teammates and coaching staff, make plays like that. And they open the lead up now to 25 points. Makes the score Jaguars 42, Vikings 17. Josh Lambeau to kick off for Jacksonville. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. Fielded in the end zone. And Abdullah will not try to bring it out. At their own 25-yard line. Vikings now to start their next drive and they gave up the pick six and now they'll be looking to right the ship here now as a quarterback are you a little more cautious this go around Number 30, you should be just because after what you gave up but you can't be so cautious as to just really take things in and now you're not going to play loose enough to give your team a chance to score but you still have to be careful because those defensive guys I know the reputation defense guys can't catch all evidence to the contrary on that last possession, though. <laughs> a reminder, once we hit halftime, as we do all season, we'll send it down to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. He'll have all the stats and scores from games in progress. The, the best multitasker in the business, the coach. That one good for a first down pickup of 18 yards. When you struggle on offense, you're looking for anything possible to get you going. Sometimes you do it like basketball teams that don't normally press. You put a press on, bring people to life, make them move a little bit quicker. Maybe that'll help them as they enter as well. Yeah, able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. And more yards. On any explosive run, you can almost feel the ground shaking, and that's from the offensive lineman creating space for their runners. I had an old coach tell me before, they always told his runners, run around the offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens in a game. Options galore here, second and a few inches. They're going for Jefferson downfield, and that will be incomplete. sideline and he made sure that he put it where either his guy was going to catch it or no one was an incomplete pass on second down leads us to third and inches and he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41 it's a first down following a gain of three. First and 10 at the 41 yard line first down here's cousins He'll rifle this one deep right side. Oh, it'll be intercepted. Good positioning, and it's picked off. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. At their own that is now five interceptions that he has thrown in this ball game. If I ask you to speculate what's possibly going on in his head, I mean, what would you say? Well, if he's as mentally strong as I believe he is, he understands that not all these picks have been his fault. You know, some of the throws, yes, but there have been a good number of them where he hasn't been helped by... He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off at the 19. And he's going to score. It's a thinking touchdown. Short throw, pick six right there, those linebackers. They love when those short throws come and those eyes get real wide, don't they? How about the anticipation on the play? Reading, reacting, and then the ability to catch the football and take it in the opposite direction. Bailey got the extra point, and that'll cut the lead down to 18. Fields it in the middle of the end zone. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. At their own 19-yard line. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. You've got under a minute to go here until halftime. You've got the good size lead. No need to do anything crazy. No, there really is no need to do anything crazy. The smart play, go ahead and take your lead into the locker room and then try to add to it in the second half. But there's a part of me that looks at this and says, first half going my way, I have a little bit of a cushion. Let's go ahead and try and extend things. If you've got some good plays drawn up, you might want to think about them right here. That'll be incomplete with nine seconds now showing on the clock. He was trying to find his tight end, Josh Oliver. And that'll make it third down. And five yards 
to go. Working out of the gun. Love. and a timeout with three seconds left in the first half. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. On the give, this is McFarland. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. So we've reached halftime in a wild first half. We'll take a minute to catch our breath as we'll head down to Orlando. That's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach, the Jaguars in possession of the lead, and they will get the football as we are underway in this second half. Takes this about five yards deep. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much, as he's marked down officially at the 21. At their own 21-yard line. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. They go bootleg. Love. And this throw is going to be incomplete. DJ Chark, first time pro bowler, the intended receiver. And it's third and four. He's got to be kicking himself right there. His team's already picked off two passes. That would have been the third in the game. And boy, they've really played well attacking the football. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Love looking to throw it. And that is incomplete. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away. But the bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. Here's Logan Cook now as he'll kick it away for the second time. It's a 39-yard punt, three on the return. And possession will switch hands, first and 10. They're on 33-yard line. The Minnesota offense about ready to get this next drive underway. And Charles, they trail by three scores. Look, they're not completely out of this, but it's sort of go time right now. Yeah, and they knew that coming out after halftime, it was going to take a collective effort to get back into this ball game. The defense got the stop for them, so maybe that can get things started. And the offense has to pick their game up as well. If they can put a score on the board, hey, they could get back in it in a hurry. First and 10 at the 24-yard line. So the big play gets them all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and 10. They run. Cook. And he takes it down to the 10-yard line. All told, they get 13 yards on that play. Despite the score, despite the deficit, no quitting this guy. He's running angry, running through arm tackles. He wants to change what that scoreboard is saying. So not quite a first and goal. It's first and 10 from the 10. On first and 10, Cousins. And my goodness, another interception. Picked up by the rookie from Florida, C.J. Henderson. And he'll be stopped shy of the 15 at the 14-yard line on the return. At their own 14-yard line. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. And all the way down to the 
26. Complete. A big play there on the catch and run. And even 60 yards. First down, Jackson. So that changes things in a big way. Now from all the way down inside the 30, here's first and 10. On the handoff, it's McFarland. And he's going to have just a couple here with a marker on the field as well. So he was holding from that left tackle position. Everyone tries to keep their hands inside when they're blocking ever since they liberalized the rules where you can extend them out. But sometimes they get out a little wide and they get detected grabbing some cloth. Love from the gun. Oh, nearly a disaster there on the check down. But they'll get it back. I know that interception was dropped, and it would have been their third of the game. And I will guarantee you, in the huddle, on the bench, all the defensive guys have been talking about is, we've got this guy right where we want him. Who's going to get the next one? It almost becomes a challenge, and they've missed a golden opportunity. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. Now Love. This one caught by his tight end, Oliver. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 19 yards there on the catch and run. A gain of 19 and while we may be looking at the scoreboard, this offense certainly is not because they're showing no signs of backing down, even with a three-score lead here in the third quarter. I think they keep taking their shots. They've seen blown leads happen throughout this league. They don't want to fall victim to it themselves. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. And Ben Gideon in on the stop. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. Again, McFarland. Oh, the football it's loose and this belongs to the vikings always costly to cough up that football these defenders they become so adept though at jarring it free yeah it's amazing that there aren't more fumbles caused because now if you're an offensive player you go through ball security drills every single day it's really not out of line to think you should take the ball to bed with you and just hold on to it <laughs> but the bottom line is no matter how much you try to protect it these guys are pretty good at finding ways to knock it out the improv on the scramble there gets him six and it'll be second down second and four from the 26 they'll line up on second and four Throwing his cousins. They're going for Jefferson down. And that's caught inside the 35. And he gets all the way down to the 30 yard line. Still all sorts of time left in this game, and you'd like to be able to say, take it one play at a time. But the truth is, the Bog gonna have to hit on a few big plays in the passing game to close this gap, and that's a good start right there. Cousins now to throw on first down. Let's it fly for Thielen. And Thielen's got it. Touchdown Vikings. Adam Thielen. His 10th touchdown of the season, second of the game. And the fumble recovery leads to six points for the Vikings. And that one makes this an 11-point deficit now. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. Fields it in the middle of the end zone. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. Take over first and 10 at their own 30-yard line. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. Their lead down to two scores after the touchdown a moment ago as they start with a first and ten. And he'll let this one go deep for Chark. And incomplete on the deep ball. DJ Chark, the intended target, and now it's second down. Looks like they went for the combo play there. A nice ample gain on the ground on the previous play. Going for the big shot on that one unsuccessfully. On second down, McFarland. Oh, he's got 
got some breathing room. And he's going to get this all the way down to the Vikings' 29-yard line. It's a big play for the Jaguars. 41 yards on the ground. First down, Jaguars. So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. Inside the five yard line. Smith on a really nice gain of 25 yards at the four yard line. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit him, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Quick throw complete. And that is caught. Touchdown, Jacksonville. Touchdown. Josh Oliver. His fifth touchdown now on the year. And the Jaguars add six to their lead. And the lead is up to 18 now. Makes the score Jaguars 49, Vikings 31. Josh Lambeau to kick off for Jacksonville. And Lambeau now, after the touchdown, he'll kick this one away. Takes this about five yards deep. And Abdullah will not try to bring it out. At their own 25-yard line. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. I guess they have to feel a little gratified to at least get on the board last time, but still work to do. No doubt about it. Winner now with the Jaguar pressure and a Jaguar sack. Josh Allen, he's the one to get him, and that is sack number seven for him on the year. That's the second sack of the game in the best defensive ends. They do their homework as much as offensive guys do. They know how to beat the offensive lineman across from them, what moves they need to do to set them up. This guy's been pretty good at it all game long. Another try after the first down sack. Cousins. And he goes across the 20 to the 22. That'll get a little bit back. Give him five on the run. And he'll be left with a third and 13. Brings up third and 13. Cousins. And the throw there going to be incomplete. The linebacker, Miles Jack, able to knock that one away. Incomplete. That's a nice job there because you've got to play the ball, not the man winning coverage. That'll keep you away from a lot of needless penalties. And he's able to knock that one away. Call this a 41-yard punt, seven on the return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. And now you've got the clock winding down here in the third quarter. Your three scores to the good. What's your approach on this run? Two only to four to make the play in the clock game. Yet at the same time, so not going pell-mell like you would in two-minute offense. This is what NFL offenses call four-minute football. Take the clock out of the game a little bit, wind it down, but at the same time, keep advancing the ball down the field. McFarland once more. And a well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. 16 yards, a first down. Now this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack, and guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. A give to the fullback on the dive. Eric Kendricks in on the tackle. That's someone who's pretty happy right there. That's the defense coordinator. Body after body getting to him before he can get started. Nine. 
second and nine. It's McFarland. They're going to snuff this play out behind the line. We have not seen that much today. They wind up losing a couple there, so they go behind the original line of scrimmage. And now third and 11 coming up. And we return welcoming you back to Minneapolis. It's Jaguar football here, and they'll look to extend their lead as we begin quarter number four. The Jaguars on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and 11. Out of the shotgun, it's Love. He lets this one fly toward the back of the end zone. And that'll be intercepted by the Pro Bowl safety, Harrison Smith. Certainly not what he was hoping for, Charles. That's now three interceptions in this ball game. But there's a lot of knowledge to be gleaned every time you throw an interception if you do things the right way. And hasn't there been a pretty darn good quarterback along the way who threw a lot of interceptions early, learned from them, and became great later? Who would that be? That'd be one Peyton Manning threw 28 his rookie year. That's the NFL record. Oh, well, this is taken in. It's complete. are able to cut into that deficit. One play, 80 yards. Pretty easy drive to recap. <laughs> it certainly is, but not so easy to execute. Starting on your own 20, you want something to kickstart your drive and get it off to a nice start. They went for the whole thing and got it. That's a great way to send a message to the opposing team. And he returns this to the 22. The Jaguars take over first and 10 at their own 22-yard line. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. If they can score here, they have a chance to make this a three-possession game and all the quick things to bed. Trying to keep those big legs churning, but he's going to go down in the backfield. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Brings up second and 11 at the 21-yard line. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. From the gun, Love. Throw right side, taken in by Godwin. And he'll get to the 29-yard line, brought down there. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. Third down. Operating from the gun, Love. And that will be incomplete. A critical play in this football game because if they pick up the first there, that clock keeps rolling. Has to be a little frustrating for them because they know that if they pick up a first down there and continue to eat away at the clock, really increases their chances of closing this one out. Now they're likely going to have to give the football up and sweat it out on the sideline. So that one will be accepted. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their own 46. Out of the gun, he'll throw. Oh, going for Jefferson. De it's caught inside the 25. And he'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. Breaking the huddle first and goal as the return team has set him up with golden field position. Now Cousins. Has got it. The big tight end for a Viking touchdown. Kyle Rudolph. His second touchdown on the season. And the Vikings are able to make this a close game again.
And applause in the action because the booth, they see something that they want to take another peek at to find out if this was a touchdown or not. That's the reason we ball for. Circle round twice with the encore. The Vikings will line up for the two points. It took them an extra look, but they found out it is a touchdown indeed. The official says this one counts. And he'll get into the end zone as the two-point conversion is successful. 49, Vikings 46. So just a three-point game now as they send this one away. Fields it in the middle of the end zone. And he'll be dropped at the 21-yard line. So bringing it out of the end zone proves not a good decision. Loses him about four yards. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. But the bad news for them, they've seen that cushion they once had totally evaporate, and they're working from behind. The good news, they now have the opportunity to regain the lead right back. And he's going to be out of bounds right at midfield. He got 29 yards that time. And the Jaguars. And these guys certainly are not hiding what their intention is. They're absolutely showing it. They're definitely not going to sit on this lead here in the fourth quarter. Some good games going on in the early window. This might be the best of the bunch. From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. Now they set up a screen for McFarlane. A nice little screen. They get six on first down. Anthony McFarlane. It's a pickup of six. Brings up second and four at the Vikings 44-yard line. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Tossing this out wide to McFarland. And he's going to be stopped just short of the first down marker at the Vikings 38. Six yards the pickup, and that's a first down. Well, with the fumble he had earlier, we, we know how key keeping the football is here. That fumble earlier probably at the forefront of his mind. Just hold on to this thing. It's also at the forefront of the mind of the guys who are trying to get the ball from him. And since they've seen him drop it on the ground before, they're doing everything possible to have him do it again. They need that turnover. Anthony Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and that'll make it second and a foot or so. Partner, I remember a coaching friend of mine used to tell his running backs before games, make sure you run and jog with your offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking when those big behemoths start to create space for you up front. He did a pretty good job of just following those guys through there for a nice explosive run. Again, this is their fullback. And he tries to power forward, but he will not get back to the line of scrimmage. After a play like that, there should be congratulations all the way around, I think, because if you can stop a big fullback like that, that's not easily done. Yeah, he does not go down easily. You're right, but he did there. on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. Here it's third and two. They'll run with McFarland. Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. He needed three. He got two. Now that'll set up an interesting situation here on fourth and a yard. Fourth down. off the field. They'll stay put on fourth and one. They'll keep it on the ground. McFarland. And he's able to pick up the first before he's taken down at the 27. They only got a couple, but a couple's all that they needed as they convert on fourth. First down, Jacksonville. Jacksonville. 
The fourth down run successful. Now they look to pay it off on first down. Switching things up, they'll throw it now with Jordan Love. That's complete. It's Anthony McFarland. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Rookie quarterback, rookie running back. They team up there to pick up the first. This is something you got to be wary of defensively. I mean, just because they're in the mode of trying to burn some clock doesn't mean they won't pass it. They got good yardage out of that one. Yeah, and really, when you're looking at it, now they've got a fresh set of downs. Look for second down. If they want to take another shot and try and loosen things up, that'd be the time to do it. Now the late signee, the former Falcon, Devontae Freeman. Now he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. So it's Jaguar football here as we welcome you back. They've got a second down now as they search for a way to get this one to the finish line. He loses the football. That is not free, but a teammate comes along and scoops it up. Almost like, it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover. It's first and goal and a late touchdown at this stage. Could officially salt this one away. They'll run with McFarland. And he'll take this into the end zone. A touchdown, Jacksonville. Jacksonville. Anthony McFarland, his second touchdown of the game, giving him 12 on the season. And the Jaguars are able to widen their lead. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. Mix the score, Jaguars 56, Vikings 46. Josh Lambeau to kick off. And Lambeau touchdown. now, after the touchdown, he'll kick this one away. And that one will bounce out of the back of the end zone, so we will start here at the 25. Minnesota offense about ready to get this next drive underway. They might be thinking this is close to a lost cause here. Got to play it out. What do they need to do? Well, they have a thought process in mind. Off. And this is intercepted. And that should do it. Picked off at the 46. And a great return as he gets this all the way down close to the 30-yard line. Well, when you're leading in the fourth quarter, that's not the penalty you want. Not at all. And now your discipline comes into question. Having poise this stage of the game, you can't have those kind of plays. Here's a throw, complete right side to start things out. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to it? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. Flushed out right, and now he's going to use his legs. And he'll go down inside the 45 before going out of bounds. Nowhere to go downfield, but he's able to get out of bounds and stop the clock here with a first down. Back-to-back -to -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Cousins. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. And a few kneel downs should just about do it. Now, defensively, they do have all three timeouts, but very little reason to use them at this point. And they get him down, but now before he takes it across the 40-yard line. The drive starting play, a good one. Give him 19. I know a lot of times we like to put players in certain boxes. He does this and he does that. But this guy, he can do a little bit of everything. He's not just a lead blocker or a guy who protects the passer. Handing the ball, he might want to get out of the way. One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10.
Defense still with three timeouts. We'll see if they want to use them here as the kneel down comes. Today's final score, Jaguar. Charles, it's one thing to win. It's another thing to win and put up the amount of points that they did. Why were they clicking on offense? They can't help but feel great about themselves, can they? I mean, what a game to put up that number of points, continually feel like they're moving the ball and things are working and clicking. They think that they can bottle this and carry it with them. And as an offensive coordinator, you just don't think you can do anything wrong. Whatever you call, run, pass, it's all going to work. That's called being in the zone. So for Jacksonville, their very slim playoff hopes get a boost as they move to 5-7. and seven, And they will head home next week to take on the Tennessee Titans. Meanwhile, for Minnesota, it's a loss that could wind up costing them a first-round bye as they dip to 9-3. and three. And they'll try to get back on the beam next week as they'll head to Tampa to take on the Bucs. So for Charles Davis and our entire crew, I'm Brandon God. Next game, guess what? Charles and I will be here again. It's the NFL on EA Sports.